Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I want to show you how you can use MCC Generator to modulate dynamically your synthesizer or effects. I'm going to be using M Sound Factory and also MCC Generator, uh, but make sure you have the unlocked version of MCC Generator. It comes with the free bundle, but you have to pay to unlock it, and we're going to need those unlocked features to do this. So let's get started here. I'm just gonna play, I have a little slight composition, just some arpeggios and guitar here to show what it can do. That's all it is. I know the guitar part doesn't make much sense, but don't worry about that. All we're gonna do is we're gonna first add some effects here in M Sound Factory. I could add them he here in the generator, but I'm gonna add them in the effects section just because they won't be cut off because I'm gonna be using some delays and also it uses less CPU. So we have the delay here. I don't know what I should set this to. Let's sync it up and quarter notes maybe. <laughs> Sounding pretty good. Let's increase the feedback. I don't like that low end, so we're gonna cut off some of the low end here. Maybe cut off a little bit of the high end. Let's hear this. That's good, but let's add ping pong element here. Going back and forth. That's good, nice and spacious. And let's add another element here. Let's add a flanger. We're gonna use, let's say, guitar middle. Turn this minimum up a little bit and we're gonna increase the feedback just so it's very prominent. Only problem with this is it's getting a bit loud. Um, maybe this is all right, but what I might want to do here is actually decrease this a bit. I'll turn this up, and we're going to take the volume and let's see, maybe minus five. Let's hear this now. So now we have this basic sound set up. But what we want to do is modulate this. So we're going to go in here, uh, modulated for this, and these two parameters we're going to modulate. So let's first take this, click clear and learn, turn the gain all the way down, all the way up to about negative 6.2 where it was, and same thing here for the depth. Like that. Good, make sure that's at zero. And now let's move this back and forth like this. Seems almost perfect. When I turn it up, you're getting a large stereo signal with effects on it. But the problem is, it seems like it's too low when it's at 0%. So what we're gonna do is just modulate this last parameter here. Don't click clear and learn, just click learn. Move this up here. And we're going to set the last parameter so the value is at zero and the max is at negative five. And the reason I'm doing that is because if we do it that way, when I have it at zero percent, the volume is going to be at zero and then it's going to decrease as we move it up. So let's play this one more time. <laughs> Perfect, that's what we want. Now let's add MCC generator. You're probably thinking like, finally, okay. So what we're gonna do here is just add MCC generator. We need to make sure this is in front of M Sound Factory. A lot of this will depend on your DAW. Only thing you need to make sure is you need to make sure there is a side chain going into MCC generator and that MC 
C generator is outputting MIDI into your synthesizer or effects. So in Reaper, it's very easy. Just put MCC generator in front of whatever synth you have, and it will send the MIDI into it. And for the side chain, I'm just going to drag this over like this. I'm going to set this pre fader, but post effects. And the reason is if I want to adjust the volume of my guitar track, I can do that easily. So I'm going to make sure this is not muted or anything. We're going to play it. And what I want to do is just check to make sure the side chain is working. So we're going to look here and hopefully our guitar will trigger something here. It is. So that means our side chain signals going in there. What we want to do next is just set up the modulation. So we're going to click on one of these. We can open it here and you see it's set in LFO. If we have that at the beginning. The modulator is not what we want. We don't want this being modulated. Uh, also, very important thing, you don't see anything happening. You want to click clear and learn and move this all the way up and down. So we do it now. You see, ah, oh, there we go. There's that LFO. But we want to use the follower instead. What we're going to do is we're going to play the guitar and we're going to move the level down and the minimum up to match it. So we can look here at what's happening to the value, you know, kind of show us. And so we want the loudest part to be at the very top of the max here. So let's play it and do that. As I did that, you know, it's like, hey, there's nothing there. Why is there no signal? And it's because I was doing something stupid, which is I did not turn on the side chain. Make sure you do that. Turn on the side chain. Here we go. That's good. We can adjust the attack for this. For this, I don't really have a problem with this attack at 10 milliseconds, but if I wanted to really sync it, we can do 30 milliseconds to a 64th note here. Uh, the release is okay. I might want to bring the RMS length down. Maybe I'll set that at two or something, but this is all up to your personal preference. One thing you might be noticing here is it's going up. So what we want to do for the synth is modulate this modulated parameter by that MIDI CC1, which we have here. Uh, you can set this to whatever channel you want here, and you can use a different controller. I'm using one just because it's there by default. But if you're using MIDI CC1 for something else with your synth, you may not want to use that. So you can set it here to something else. What we're going to do here is set up MIDI inside our synthesizer using MIDI CC Learn, and make sure it's set to modulation wheel. So I can do that and I can set it to parameter one, which is modulated here. And inside here, I can set the same thing. Okay. So this should be controlling this. We're going to play it. And as it plays now, it should modulate our synthesizer. Or not. So I probably made a slight mistake there. Yeah, I do not want this to learn. I'm going to turn this one off. This one should be on. Don't need it to learn anything anymore. But you're noticing this is turning on when my guitar is playing. That's fine, but I don't really want that. I want the opposite. I want it to play and create that huge stereo sound when I'm not playing, and then kind of like tuck in the background when I am playing. So to do that, all we have to do is just go in here and make sure this is set to invert. Now if we play it, it should work fine. I should really set this to the beginning so you can hear that.
So as you can hear, it's doing what we wanted it to do. Hopefully that's very noticeable how the modulation is going in and out. Uh, for a real piece of music, you may not want to be that you know, drastic with it. To do that, just either set the parameters here to slightly smaller values, or if you think like, actually this is pretty good, but it's just too much there, you can set your MCC generator here and move the level max up. So now it should be going to like almost 100% when I'm playing something, but by moving the level max up, it'll go to a smaller value like this. Fortunately, I'm starting in the middle, so my uh, ARP and my playing is out of sync there, but you get the idea. Now you're probably thinking like, okay, this is great, but you could do the same thing on a bus with a compressor. So like, why am I doing it this way? Which is true, but instead of using that, I'll show you something else that you have to do inside the synthesizer. If I had this in, I thought, you know what? I want to use some unison here. So I have this, I have the unison instead of in mono, now I'm playing in stereo. I like that, but I think, you know what? That beginning part, I don't want this stereo signal here, and I don't want all these unison voices. Uh, or make, well, I, Instead of changing unison voices, I can do the widening here. So let's say the widening instead. I can turn this down, mono. And have it very wide when it's not playing. And I'll do it the exact same way. I'll just clear and learn. So I'm going to erase all the other parameters back there. This, adjust my widening here. Make sure it's right. Let's move this over to like 100 there. Like this. And now when it plays, hopefully if it kept the same MIDI assignment, it should modulate this. So it's just keeping my stereo field clean while I'm playing guitar. So that's another thing. But to be honest, you could do this with almost anything. I'm not sure if it can, can I modulate the voices in real time? I haven't even under, I haven't tried that. I'm not sure if this is gonna cause some zipper noises if I change the voices while it's going. Let's try it. Oh, I can. So let's try it with that. Add another learn here. Zero, let's try 11 or 12 or something. So this way I can have it in mono with one voice as I am uh, playing, and then otherwise I can have more voices. Uh, let's make this a little bit more extreme by turning the level down like this. So let's hear it. Now that's something that would be hard or impossible to do another way. So hopefully this gave you some ideas that you can use in your own music. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, leave me any questions or comments down below, and check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.